So it's a privilege to be here today. I feel so blessed, you know, being part of this amazing generation of ours. Everybody wants to live their dream, follow it, do what they want to do, and make a difference. So I got introduced, and you, see, you heard about what the Indian Track Club is. It is India's first professional running club. I believe it's important to understand why um, I made this club and how I started it. But I want to take you through my journey. I want to tell you how, I, how it all got started. So I was born in a very sporting family. Um, my mom was a national level runner. My father was a boxer and an athlete. And all my brothers and sisters growing up, all my brothers and sisters growing up, they, um, they dreamt about becoming a professional sports person. So it was uh, golfers, runners, uh, cricketers, footballers, you name it. So I did the same. I chose the sport that many of us, I'm sure, out here are from the 90s growing up in India. I grew up playing cricket. So I was so passionate about this sport, and I, I knew I wanted to do this. I wanted to play alongside the likes of Sajin Tendulkar, and that's what I dreamt of, like all those little kids growing up in India, right? Many of them, like right now, they, that's what they do, dream about playing for the country. And my mom and my dad, they instilled this into me and my younger brother growing up. Karan and my younger brother Arjun, you got to do something for the country. Whatever you do in life, go out there, do it for the country. So I was so passionate about playing cricket, that I wrote a postcard to God. <laughs> I was 12 years old when I wrote a postcard to God and I said, I just want to become the best leg spinner in the world. Love Karan, 99. 12 years old, I don't think this postcard ever reached God. <laughs> it was found in my mom's closet and I just think about this and it just shows I, I was so passionate about this sport and this is what I wanted to do. So growing up, I, I kind of knew playing cricket, you know, I was good at it. I played Delhi State cricket and I was getting better at it and through my teenage years, I came across two individuals who had the biggest impact in my lives and they led to what I did what I'm doing today well, I'm doing this because of their actions and their words so I would like you to meet them and I connected deeply with them so the first person I want you to meet is this individual called Steve Prefontaine he's uh, no more he passed away when he was 24 years way before I was even born he lived in this place called Eugene Oregon this guy was one of the best runners of all time I was playing cricket, but I was still dreaming about becoming like a runner, and I was thinking about, you know, this guy, he's inspiring me. He is so amazing. His one foot was shorter than the other. He still ran. He broke records. People followed him. He was unbelievable. For me, he was the man I looked up to. This is Steve running, and this is one of his famous quotes. It says, to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. Th this has so much power. It has so much courage in what he said, and it inspired me. So what I'm doing today is because of these words, and I believe in what he said. The next person I want you to meet who inspired me and what I'm doing today is Captain Pritam Chaudhary. You see Pritam in the picture right there. He's looking up at the Indian flag. He's a very good friend of mine, and we started playing cricket together. We dreamt about playing cricket for the country. And he transitioned onto representing India right in the line of fire. He's currently serving for the Indian Army in Sudan, and he's loving what he's doing. He's living his dream, you know? And this is what he told me once, when I was 15 years old. He says, Karan, it's one thing to follow your passion, but I challenge you. I challenge you to go beyond that. Try and make a difference, a positive difference in people's lives, and be the change. I challenge you, Karan. He told me, it stayed in my head, you know? I was so excited. I said, wow, this guy has told me something, and it's, it's, just, it's so meaningful. But I was young, you know, 15 years old, I go back to playing cricket, that's what I wanted to do. My plans were set out. I knew what I was going to do. I was going to get out of school, I'm going to get into the Ranji Trophy, when I get into the Ranji Trophy, I'm going to play for the country. Life is planned out, that's what my parents wanted. Thinking about it now, you know, uh, like, I think God, has d God had different plans for me. So I was playing cricket and playing at a good level until one day. It was like the world came crashing down. This is my knee, my right knee. I injured my right knee and I tore my ligaments. So I had no more ligaments in my right knee. Within seven months, I tore my second knee. Same surgery. I was out from the sport for two years. My world came crashing down. It was like God had taken two feet away from me. All I knew was playing cricket. And you know how it is, right? You're 17 years old. You're making decisions in your life. And you want to go out there, be successful. And all I knew as a little kid was how to play cricket. And my life was made. And boom, for two years, I was bedridden. I couldn't do nothing. 
all I knew was playing cricket. And it was difficult, you know. Life was in darkness. But in this negativity of two years, which is the worst two years of my life, came out the most positive thing. So as you all know, you know, when, you, when you're injured, you come out re do, do, through rehabilitation. And I had my rehab. Through my rehab, I started walking. Once I, once I started walking, I started running. And the more I ran, the more I enjoyed. I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed it so much that after five to six months of my injury, I obviously wanted to get back to cricket, you know, that's because that's what I wanted to do. But I was going for my cricket practices, but I was so looking forward to getting back home and I want to go for that five kilometer run. So I started running recreationally at the age of 19. I started running recreationally every day, five to 10 kilometers, wherever I could find space, parks, you know, you name it, stadiums, roads, treadmills. And that's what I was doing. So that's, that, that, that I, you know, I was thinking of Steve Prefontaine, you know, and like I said, you know, since childhood, the Indian flag and doing things for the country was so important. So in my head, I had the Indian flag, and in my head, I had Steve Prefontaine who was running with me. And I said, oh my God, I'm loving this. This is so much better than cricket. I am so passionate about it. I don't feel like going for cricket. I feel like running morning, evening. So I told myself, I said, Karan, let's try a shot at this. M move cricket from your life and move on to running. I went and told my parents. It took some convincing, you know. It took some convincing. My pa parents believed me. They said, Karan, if you truly believe in it, go for it. Get into co you, you're going into college. Manage your time. Try and handle it. But with those knees, was it possible actually making a legitimate chance of becoming a professional level runner with two bad knees? So we went to the doctor, one of the best surgeons in India who, did, who worked on both my knees. And he says, you're crazy. <laughs> to even think that you want to become a professional runner is crazy, let alone do it. But I said, I'm going to go and do it. My parents were with me. We went for it. And that's what I wanted to do. And I started training, I got my school self a coach in Delhi, and I trained hard, I trained night and day. My timing was crazy, people called me nuts. I used to go to college, a management institute, but I used to get up at 3.30 in the morning, go for training at 4.30, train for two hours, come back at 6.45, eat my breakfast, go to college, come back, sleep for an hour, go for two hours of training again, sleep. come back home, eat my food, and sleep. That was what I did six days a week, twice a day. Three years in a row, I worked hard. And it paid off because I got better. And then I got this amazing opportunity to move to the United States. And that's me with the Indian flag in the United States when I started winning races and I started doing well. I started doing so well that I got called up for the Indian national camp. I did even better and guess where I moved? I moved to Eugene, Oregon, the dream place where I wanted to be since childhood and Steve Prefontaine. Trackdown, USA. This is Eugene, Oregon. That's a picture of me. That's please grave. And um, very, very meaningful for me. And uh, something that I cherish for the rest of my life. And I moved there, you know. Uh, life is amazing how it takes you to these places. And that's Tracktown USA. So Tracktown USA, if some of you, most of you out here might not know about this, but Tracktown USA is Eugene, Oregon. And all the best runners in the world, when they dream about becoming a better runner and a professional runner and getting professional contracts, that's where they move. And that's where I was. So I ran for two professional teams, living my dream, living the life. Perfect, right? Now, all of this, right, if I'm living a perfect life, why move back to India and start something, what I'm doing right now? Why am I doing what I'm doing right now? I'll tell you why. So there were a few things that happened, right? Instances happen, facts happen, and then you move on. So I'm, I'm, I'm training, and I'm training hard. Sorry about that. I'm, tra I'm, tra I'm training hard, and uh, I used to live in the United States for six months and come back to India for the national camp and go back. That was what I did. So I lived in the best place in the world, which had the top-notch training, the best sports medicine, the best coaches. I had the best teammates to run with. So the environment was perfect. And you look at India, in the world of athletics, it's right in the lower tier. So I had the best of both worlds, right? I saw, I saw what I saw. So when I would move to the national camp, you know, it'll take me a long time to explain to you exactly what happened, but I'll take out a few instances that triggered me and started what we started. How many of you out here know what a national, uh, what a, how many of you know how How many of you out here know what an ice bath is? I don't think many, many of you do know what an ice bath is. An ice bath is something that an athlete looks forward to the most. It is the most fun part about an athlete. So you, you're training, you're training hard and you have these gruesome sessions and your muscles are tired. You put in a tub, you put in cold water and then you put ice in it and you get into it, right? It's fun. She's having fun, right? She's having fun. No, it, it's, it's not that much fun because, you know, it's cold and it's difficult to get into that. But you get used to it as an athlete. But talking about ice baths, so, you know, coming from America, I had this inflatable ice bath. You know, you put air into it 
and you put water into it and you can control it temperature and it's really nice and high fi and the water seeps out in a particular way and i was like i'm, I'm taking the ice bath to the national camp and i got into it one day after my session got into it and i got out and i looked outside my window and what do i see i see number 1 number 2 number 3 rank runners in india holding slabs of ice and putting it on the knees and the legs and i said oh my god no 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 what was i no these are the best runners in the country running the commonwealth games the asian games the best runners in the country and they putting slabs of ice and look at me i'm in this fancy nice little i uh, ice bath of mine you know it hurt me it hurt me like a dagger in my heart but not so much for me to make a change i moved back to eugene went back because i wanted to do what i wanted to do i wanted to become a professional runner and i i was a professional runner i wanted to even better i was close to running for the country that's what i wanted to do so when i moved back to eugene something happened that changed everything one day in june 2012 a big event took place there where the best runners in the world the top 30 female runners in the world were invited to come and compete and two indian runners the number 1 and 2 preja shridharan and kavita rawat who are very close friends of mine as well they came there they came there with the indian flag and it was a proud moment for me the indian flag is that the best indian runners uh, best girls are there coming in training with uh, you know running in this big race but what happened in that race she she ran that they ran that race and they came last and second last out of 35 girls and they got overlapped which meant that they finished one round and one person crossed them again in one lap 80% of them i saw that I was driving back home a rainy night rains a lot in Eugene so I was driving back and I kept nodding my head I said no 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 this can't happen this is india we're talking about what are we doing do we really have a i asked myself that question does does india have a legitimate chance of winning medals or even qualifying for the olympics do these girls even have stand a chance i said no they don't stand a chance we need to change something then free them what he told me being the change came into my head and i said i'm going to do something i penned something down that night and i said i'm going to start making a plan and i'm going to make it happen in a way that we're going to start with working with young little children it has to start a culture has to start and what i saw in eugene you know because they work a lot with young kids so moving on i i made this big decision of moving back to india so it took me 10 to 12 months to make that plan sitting there in eugene but i moved back to india and i had this whole force positive force behind me It was all the best professionals in the world they said current this is a revolutionary idea just go for it don't think twice this is it you can do it and we are always there to help you so i came with a whole barrage of positivity i landed in india and what do i get negativity I said no way this cannot happen son few months down the line you'll realize things this doesn't work like this you'll come back to your normal thing then you might go back to eugene you might do your own thing this is india India does not have a sports culture nobody even wants to run how will you even get one athlete who wants to run for the country who wants to run everybody wants to play cricket or they want to get into engineering or so and so and so and so i heard enough of that i said no there is a way about it even in eugene or even anywhere even in kenya or ethiopia where the running culture is there it started one day there was one day that it started and this is the start that was then and this is now within 5 months the indian track club has 18 athletes serious athletes between the ages of 6 and 18 all from different backgrounds upper middle class lower middle class middle class street children who are all young and who all say they want to run for the country who i believe run can run for the country and it's such a proud feeling that within 5 months we've had this you know professional club they brought they have teams of 5 7 8 18 in this country six children you know six year old kids who want to say that you want to run for the country coach you want to run for the country and we share a few experiences about what we did the club one of the most amazing experiences at the club was salam balak trust i'm sure many of you know what the salam balak trust is it's an ngo for street and working children we went then we held a time trial this time trial for over 100 200 children and we said all right show what you can do all you street children run bare feet but let's see how fast you can run we we'll select five kids we selected five kids this is what a couple of pictures from salam balak trust i can barely be seen from one of these pictures on the right on the left you see them hugging me now this is not because of my flashy equipment that i've got from the united states or all these orange indian track club jersey that i'm wearing no it was because all right take me with you we want to run for the country all of us want to run for the country take me with you we can do it and th- because they're young they're six, seven years old they haven't seen anything they, all they know is that they want to run for the country and this country is so great and i said wow and i look back at those times and all those people who said no it can't happen it won't work like that yeah, in our country nobody understand it there you go 
Little children, this is what they want. And I was happy. And this was uh, something that I said, all right, Indian Track Club is here to stay. Another really important experience happened. The Indian Track Club held its very first event. We do events as well. So we held this event for little children. Now in India, we don't have a culture that children get an opportunity to run. So we invited a lot of schools. We invited 700 athletes, little kids to run in races. And this was the first time in India, as little as four years old, these kids were running in a race in lanes, organized, and it was amazing. And the event was successful. But the event being successful was not the main thing. Something even bigger than the hap that happened one day on that event. At lunchtime, everybody's eating their snacks, having their drinks. And I, I'm sure many of you have heard Bhag Milka Bhag, the song Zinda. Right? So Zinda is a beautiful song. I turned that on. And when I turned that on, oh my god, it was mesmerizing. Those little feet, those little feet, the red tracks, and the music, it, they went wild. There were what, 50 to 55 kids out of the 700, 50 to 55 kids who got on the tracks and they started running. They started running. They went head to skelter. It was wild. It was unbelievable. It was uh, for everybody to see. Everybody saw it. The families were happy. The parents were happy. And you know, you're looking at the coaches being happy. The I, I, I told myself that time, I said, all out of all these 700 children, one of them could be the one, the special one, to take the Indian flag to the podium. And I said, all right, the Indian track club is here to stay. And I felt that was the moment. And I felt so proud. And that's the mission, my friends, is the Indian track club. And we are only for one mission, to bring India the elusive gold medal for our country. Jai Hind. Thank you.